Hi, this is Privateer Station, and today we are bringing you Day 182, a daily Ukraine war diary done in the format of an interview conversation between Russian opposition journalist Mark Fagan and the Ukrainian advisor to the office of the president, Alexei Aristovich. Dear friends, glad to see you all on Fagan Live. It is Wednesday, August 24th. It is 1 minute past 10 in Kiev, and we're doing another stream day 182 with Alexei Rostovich. Alexei, glad to see you. Likewise. It is a special day today. Two dates coincided, important dates uh, coincided calendarily. So, annual Independence Day of Ukraine and uh, six months since the start of Moscow aggression against Ukraine and uh, military occupation of its territories. I think this symbolism has everything one needs to understand the importance of uh, Ukraine independence and its struggle and also position of Ukraine in Europe. And I'm not even talking about Russia at this point, it's too clear. All right, uh, the usual ask, please subscribe to Fagin Live, to Alexei Rostovich and to the Privateer Station, if you have not done that yet, and if you're listening to that in English. All right, let's start uh, briefly what happened on the front. You have not been there a couple of days. Um, you have not been in our stream for a couple of days. So uh, today Shoigu announced that on the southern direction, uh, the Russian offensive did not start because I don't know if he meant to delay or whatever happened, but because they're caring for the civil population of Ukraine. That's why they have not started the offensive. So tell us more how do they care about civilians in Ukraine? Oh yeah, they are terribly caring. Out of 22,000 missile strikes, uh, only 500 were targeting military targets, the rest were for civilians. That's one. Second, today's hits on Ukraine were much weaker than many people expected. If uh, Remember, we talked about a risk of uh, attacks on Kiev. Oh yeah, we did talk about that, that uh, they will not reach the target. So yeah, their um, pipe is smaller, smoke is weaker, they don't really, didn't really impress anyone. So why? Is it, are they running out of something or you got too uh, good of uh, air defense? Well, it's a sum of different reasons. One of it is too many foreigners in Kiev. If uh, they make a strike, they may kill one of the ambassadors or one of the foreigners from Germany or France or the United States. So that's one. They're idiots. Yeah, I know, but still. Another uh, point is that, yes, our anti-air defense is pretty good. So we are targeting, we are covering not just civilians, we are covering military targets around. And another one is, well, if they send some of the missiles here, they'll just lose them. It most likely will not reach. And the next part is negotiations, because every att attack as such will delay potential for negotiations even further. And there is also a Security Council of United Nations meeting today, so if there was another big strike like that, that could affect the agenda. They're hitting the towns that are closer to the front, where these hits are taken much more in parentheses naturally by that time, um, because they're not using large... Uh, anything ballistic or crews, they use field artillery. 
for the most part. And they, they're running out of different options they have, so they're not interested in escalation. Escalation usually does not lead to peace talks. So talking about peace, one can look into Shoigu's statement. I think it's a sum of different things, how they're begging for uh, and negotiating for uh, Magate visit in a certain terms and other things. So people are still talking about the perspective of um, court martial over of Azov fighters in Mariupol. We talked about it two days ago, but uh, all of a sudden we have some media injections uh, claiming that it will not be starting or it will be delayed. Do you think President Zelensky's statement affected that? He already said that if that happens, we're not talking to you never ever. Like never ever ever. So. Not that we were, we're going to negotiate with them right now, but uh, such an action will preclude any negotiations going forward. And Ukraine also made a point that they're sending all the documents to the international legal uh, organizations everywhere where it is uh, valid to address that this is a violation of uh, international norms. So now they they are facing an interesting dilemma in Russia. They first need to show their most active slice of population that Azov fighters were punished, but at the same time they don't want to run into uh, serious repercussions for that. So you think they may push back and delay the court? Yeah, they probably will try to push it out or maybe you know, something will delay it or maybe minimize the overall impact, right? Put maybe 10 people instead of hundreds. Yeah, probably. They might uh, diminish the total number. So maybe they'll pick one or two people, but uh, I don't think they'll do the mass tribunal. But even that, it, we'll see. I don't think they'll follow through with this uh, charade. So it seems like we're giving them a little bit of adequacy which we did not observe much before. Well, they had some adequacy. They, they, they uh, did not have adequacy, I should correct. They had rationality of their point of view. The problem is that they miscalculated, but within their faulty calculation, they were pretty rational. So, they, another example that they are still somewhat rational, they were creating a third military corps as a strategic reserve. And there were different numbers in the press and the media that they were targeting maybe getting up to 80,000 people. Uh, more likely it should have been 50 and 80, it's kind of inflated. But uh, they managed to gather less than 10, didn't even complete the formation and they sent less than 10,000 on the front recently to reinforce some of the positions. So the whole Russia cannot really gather even 15,000. Putin realizes that he asked for 15, but he got less than 10. So that's kind of end of the line. That's uh, what they're doing now, and they're reinforcing their strategic defense. And after that, they continue still to be cannibals, basically, uh, eating babies for breakfast, but they're still calculating what can they do. All right, let's talk about some numbers. Zaluzhny, the head of military command of uh, Ukraine, named a number near 9,000 uh, killed Ukrainian fighters. That number was voiced publicly. He was the one who revealed it. Remember back, I think it was May, you and me were talking about uh, Ukrainians uh, killed since the beginning of this uh, incident, this war, and uh, there were different numbers, and we talked about a uh, hundred 
50 to 100 or 150. Uh, totally, it com total it comes to about a thousand and a half per month, so about hundred and from fifty to one hundred and fifty per day. And um, overall, it seems like we did guesstimate the, the number relatively correct back then. Um, what if we compare that with Russian losses? They recently published in Russia an interesting document saying that Ukraine lost 76,000 military fighters. Uh, it only an idiot can believe that. This is fake. So speaking about Russian losses, I think it's uh, easy 50, 60,000 cadre. Then uh, Wagner private contractors, probably another 15. And then if you take those fake republics, they're probably another 25,000 there. So that's that's a big number overall. There were some calculations earlier that uh, Russia will start folding when they'll lose about 80,000. We're close. We're actually over that, right? But that those calculations were about the cadre military. I don't know if a private contractor like Wagner do play the same role in that uh, emotional folding. But I suspect they're pretty close. Daily, I think Russians are losing close to 100 to 150 right now. Hours a bit less, probably 30, 50, 70 tops. So the average relation is 10 hours for 40 Russians and one for four. And generally for the balance between the attacker and the defender that's about right one to three um, one of the on the defending side three or four on the attacking side and they're actually losing more because of uh, the poor medical service they have very non-traditional relation of dead and wounded we discussed that yep okay um, next one Lukashenko continues to surprise us he's uh, like your god godfather now right uh yeah now he's sort of a godfather because he christened me to be a terrorist right um he stated a couple days ago that you, belarus is not going to attack ukraine no and today he actually officially congratulated with uh, independence day uh ukraine leadership and people uh, wished some peace and peaceful sky and some other things. So, going from that information, do you think Lukashenko is out? Oh yeah, Luka is out. Uh, he he's out long time ago, but uh, official statement is a serious thing in every gang. So that that gangster came out and said, "No, he's clean." So, what do you think uh, will happen to him? I think nothing will happen to him, and uh, Moscow will not punish him, because I think ultimately they're looking for peace uh, negotiations, for peace talks, so they would not uh, impose anything on him. So you think the threat from the north can be discounted? There is no problem on land since about middle of April. And do you think Minsk could be influenced uh, to alleviate the other part, to push Russia out and make sure they don't do any flyovers, any missile strikes from the territory of Belarus? Lukashenko is not ready for that. And this may probably only happen if Putin's regime will start to fold and withdraw. Then maybe he will start bringing this question up. You'll need me to help you when you're out. Um, so let me stay neutral for now and speak peace and talk about necessity of dialogue. I'll be an intermediary, so only in that situation probably. And uh, he'll probably offer his services to talk to the West, to talk to Ukraine. Yeah, I see him doing that. Okay. Next, Biden also congratulated Ukraine. Uh, sent very warm words 
and gave 2.8 billion dollars uh, for additional armaments. In your opinion, these 2.8 billion, they're not just money, right, or ammo. They include some new armaments for Ukraine that can change situation on the front significantly. They're giving us uh, new NASAMS complexes. They're anti-air defense systems. Are they Norway made? No, Norway has them, but uh, in the arsenal, but they're joint produced. So they cover, by the way, White House. Yeah, Piankovsky, the other guest, told me about it. They have uh, very broad capabilities, and they can even, some specialists are saying they can also shoot down uh, most of the cruise missiles. Um, so, and we're also getting more, more systems and how much? 245,000 artillery shells. These numbers really delight me. Bloomberg announced that we have not, I've not seen the documents, but that's in the official numbers. This is a good number because until now we had maybe 100, 150, 45,000, and now it's 250. That's a big number. And given that Western artillery is more effective, so where Russian artillery needs to use six shells, Western needs to use one. So you can multiply that and it's roughly about a million shells, uh, converting that into the average front efficiency. Plus they're talking about drones, about anti-drone portable defense systems. So one can see that Americans are analyzing the situation on the front and they're actively helping us, for which we are very grateful. There are nations without which we would not be celebrating this day today. It's United States, it's Great Britain, it's Baltic countries and Poland. Poland, uh, for example, gave us tanks, almost 300. If not Poles, if not uh, Baltic countries, Brits and Americans and Scandinavians, we simply would not have been here. And we're also grateful to other countries as well. Germans uh, that we attacked uh, and uh, discussed so much on this show, they're actually one of the major suppliers now. And French, uh, who also got uh, some sour comments early on, they gave us about fifth of their uh, MLRS systems. So, you know, Italians, many countries are helping. And by the way, did you hear about Crimean platform? That summit happened for the second time. Um, people like Erdogan, Schultz and Macron, they made very rough statements in that relation. They said that Crimea is Ukrainian and Ukrainian victory in this war will mean return of Crimea to Ukraine. Scholz and Macron also said that Putin's Russia deceived the West so much and right now we need to have the most pragmatic approach to achieving Russian military defeat in Ukraine. Because Russia is, you know, Russia, Russia was stating that they are fighting with the West all the time and finally West is waking up to see that. And, yeah, many of them uh, stated that uh, Ukraine victory is a uh, return of Crimea. And our president stated today, once again, congratulating our people, told them that we are liberating the whole territory. He did mention both Crimea and Donbass. So he is really pushing it. We, uh, yeah, he was pushing these buttons and, oh yeah, we told that he's playing on Putin's nerves with his style, with his uh, uh, statements. Yeah, for me, so it was pretty rough uh, statements. I did not expect good support from Erdogan and uh, Europe like that, but uh, I liked what they said. This is good. Today, 
Johnson also visited us and brought some gifts. Um, they are mostly mostly they are micro drones, which are important for the front, for like really really tactical level, where a small group of soldiers can use a drone to see who's behind the buildings, who's behind the trees. These things help our troops to survive. And given that our Brits are also preparing our troops, so they will know how to use it, um, there are a lot of good gifts. And using this opportunity, I want to say again to all these nations and people supporting us and people donating and helping us, without your help, we would not be alive today. With all that huge price we're paying today for independence, in a certain way, this is the first uh, really uh, real one paid for in big blood um, that had a lot of chances to not happen. So we can discuss the volumes and other things, uh, how we were supported by our allies, but without that help, we would not be here. So we are very grateful that we have it and we hopeful that you guys will continue supporting us. Because I was hoping to see more Heimer system in that 3 billion, but you didn't. No, I didn't. Why? I don't know why. I was trolling American journalists this whole week as I was talking to them. They were asking different questions. How are you doing? I was answering, yeah, we're, we're, we're good. We're fighting. And to the question, what would you like to have? I would always say 25 Heimers. Because imagine the destiny of Europe is hanging on 25 Heimer systems. With 25, we stopped Russian offensive. With 25 more, we can kick them out. Well, we will need to have artillery and shells, right? So I was asking them back, why are these systems not supplied? And they were somewhat folding, saying that we don't know why is it not happening. So Western press officially do not see barriers for resupply of these 25 Heimer systems, right? Nobody sees the official barriers to that. When they already supplied 25, you know, you can supply 25 more. One thing, when, it, when it's a complete different uh, nomenclature, new system that was not supplied before, but once you've uh, uncorked a certain type, uh, supplying a bit more usually doesn't matter much. Do you think it could be related with uh, certain fears of the White House? Of what, what kind? I don't know, maybe Moscow put some ultimatums and set some rules. Sorry, Moscow did what? Moscow can set ultimatums still? With what? What with they'll be threatening? They could barely gather the third uh, military corps uh, the end of, the, of their strategic defense. So why? I think it's a reflection of the internal struggle in the United States. You know, people are looking for conspiracy, but knowing how Americans work, you know, it could be an order coming. We need to prepare HIMARS. So we need to prepare, we need to get those people who service the machines. So they need to get there. There is bureaucracy involved. And they do good. They actually do service their vehicles, not like Russians uh, can serve their stuff. Also, another notion, for example, when Europeans give equipment, uh, they give everything with repair tools, it's uh, top-notch, prepared, ready for battle. Uh, when Americans give that, they give it fast, but very often they pick it from the warehouse where it was conserved, and uh, it sometimes is lacking spare parts and stuff. So then our mechanics uh, start having a few headaches trying to figure out. But there is a procedure still. But at the same time, these two or three months, they're key months. If we manage to effect a severe defeat on Russian troops and push them out of Crimea and Donbass, or if we don't, there was that letter of 20 in the Atlantic, remember, Atlantic Council. We discussed that. I do share their opinion. I think it would be very convenient and pr proper to increase the armaments that we have and in the next two to three months we could 
without uh, Russian troops substantially, so they would enter winter much less prepared. And we do want uh, to preclude the situation of winter positional warfare happening. I'm becoming a nerd showing who's going to be showing questions every show now and asking why. And I was saying that question, posting that question to Americans, because winter is coming with possible natural gas, blackmail, or Russians can also hit some energy positions in Ukraine that we will lose electricity. And Americans, you will be left trying to help Europe to survive cold winter. And uh, you will waste a lot of money doing that. So instead of, you could just supply us 25 Heimer systems. That whole eventuality is hanging on 25 Heimer systems. You have, you have a lot, you have from 500 to 1,000. So it's not too difficult to remove 25 from storage and send them here. I don't know if you see that the whole chat is now full of mentions that uh, railroad station Chaplin in uh, Dnipropetrovsk region. There are dead and wounded. That happened right during the stream. Yeah, it happened six minutes ago. I didn't. Uh, yeah, you did not have that news coming in. That's Russians. What can you do with them? Mariana Betsa, referring Western media, posting that they are damn Putinoids, what can you do? 15 people dead, 20 plus wounded. So that's, yeah, typical Putin's regime. As there is a council, security council in the United Nations, that's when they hit civilian target. Zelensky also confirmed that strike. Uh, in his tweet, it's 15 dead, 50 wounded. He did warn that there might be hits, right? So, waiting. Yeah, so there's more news coming on that. Will there be an answer? Absolutely, there will be. Will that answer be on Crimea? We'll see. There's no need to guess here. You'll see. Yep, I see pictures. The station is destroyed, railroad, trains. Why don't we make some suggestions what Ukraine may hit? Uh, I don't see why. I can say that, yes, it will hit. It will find new targets, our response. But let's not give them ideas what, what can we hit. And it, it might take a day or two to, invest, to do the final investigation of the fat targets, because we don't just shoot. The situation of the beginning of this year when they were shelling us with 100, 150 missiles daily and killing civilians, we, and we had nothing to retaliate with, that situation is gone. So now we can respond to these attacks. Do you think that may help with the HIMARS question? Because look, without them, we're getting shelled, civilians keep dying. If you give us uh, these systems, we can at least reach the targets that can become the source of these threats. That's another argument, the Day of Independence, yes. Yeah, I see more data coming through. 15 people dead. I confirm, yes, I also checked. All right, we'll see how this situation will develop further. We've been live for about 30 minutes. Let's see if we're meeting tomorrow, right? We have a stream on Thursday. Yes, we do. Uh, I want to say my channel will have three streams tomorrow. Yours will be the last one. A small announcement. Um, all three recipients of our charity programs, we transferred money, 2,000 euros each. One uh, family from Kharkov, Kubata family who lost their son, 
and whose daughter is wounded and I think the wife there is a uh, pretty high-ranking chess player also another kid is being sent to be treated in Israel I think the guy was from Nikolaev region he was walking with dad when the Russians hit so Israel fund turned to us and we send them to this family so this boy is being sent there for treatment so we appreciate when other organizations come to help us also we have two more families that we helped the last one was in Nikolaev a girl who uh, had a big issue with her eye and also a um, military fighter, Zahar, who lost three limbs, and we sent money to them as well, to her wife, to his wife. Um, so we're trying to process more data coming in and uh, looking for new targets to support, but it does take time. It's just several of us working at here between the streams. Uh, guys, keep purchasing T-shirts. We have uh, some money. Thank, thank to you. But please continue doing that. All, all of these uh, merch uh, funds go to help the families. Our standard amount is two thousand euros. It's not much, but it's basic something to support them initially. I suspect after this train, we'll need to help some of those victims again uh, I suspect there will be kids because it's trains rail stations so yeah people if you get more information about families and children please uh, share I think we can already provide help to three or four families right now We don't know the details yet, it just happened, but uh, we're always ready to help with what we have. All right, let's talk tomorrow, see what news come through, and uh, we'll be awaiting for Ukrainian answer. Yeah, it might take a day or two to confirm the target. Once again, I can say that there are assholes and idiots sitting in Kremlin who refuse to realize that every strike like that uh, has consequences for you idiots but since you are idiots uh, well we'll see what happens later all right tomorrow 10 p.m we're meeting alexa again goodbye please share this stream subscribe to our channels and to the privateer station mark one more second happy holiday everybody and glory to ukraine